Okay, so we need to drill holes between these two holes here. I know a lot of you guys have been enjoying this build. I appreciate it. And I know I've gotten a lot of guys saying uh, they enjoy watching all the videos, all the different builds, and I appreciate that too. But I'm gonna stick with this bug as long as I can. Hopefully we can get it back on the road in a few weeks. We'll see what happens. All right, those are looking pretty good. gonna have to lower this down. I'm gonna have to clean this up. It's a little rusty. I haven't used it in a while. Let's get this end done. It's gonna be similar. It's gonna be the same thing on the rotisserie, but on this end, we're gonna have to get some big holes for those. Hey guys, the 1965 BW Beetle has a sponsor and it's Air Cooled. Air Cooled makes high quality drivetrain components for your classic air cooled Volkswagen. Complete pro built beams, transaxles, US made disc brake kits, custom wheels, and a lot more. Go check them out. Scan the QR code below or click on the link in the description. Guys, check them out. Let me know what you think. Let's get back to the video. There we go. 
I'll knock some of that burr off real quick. All right, my measurement and drilling were off just a little bit, so we had to open this hole up just a bit more, but they are in there now. That thing is on there solid. I had to knock this down a little bit because the socket couldn't get in on the, the bolt head. So I was just tapping on that to get it down a little bit. There's plenty on this side, but this angle iron is bent up right here a little bit for some reason. So we're here. We already know how to do this side. This should be easy. Already have the holes ready. As long as they line up, let's see if they work. There it is. That's cool. Really cool. It is floating in air. Alright guys, there it is. It is attached to the rotisserie. A little harder than I thought. Um, also, I can't seem to find a center of gravity. This pan, the way it's designed and the way it's attached, you know, there's there's a center, there's a certain degree that both of the rotisseries need to be at and able to turn this thing efficiently. I was able to do that with the body of the Carmen I, I was able to turn the whole Carmen body no problem. This, for some reason, I can't seem to get it up past like a 45 degree angle. So I attached it to the winch to help me get it into that, you know, straight up and down angle. We've got it on here. I'm going to knock down some of the welds on the pan, maybe fill in a couple little holes that I missed and scuff it up with a scotch Bright pad, blow it off and get ready to paint. Let's do it.
All right, guys, we're getting there. A lot of prep work. There are some holes. These are the little holes that were left from the self-tapping screws that we tapped from the top side to hold the pan to this chassis right here to hold them tight so we could weld the pans in. So there's one, two, three, four, five. There's five or six on each side. I'm gonna go ahead and weld those in and clean this up a little bit. I scuffed down both sides with the uh, Scotch-Brite pad, blew everything off, just double checking everything for, you know, little bits of dirt or whatever. Let's fix those holes, check it one more time and get ready to paint. All right, I got the epoxy primer set out and the gloss paint. I picked up this epoxy primer last year from Tamco and we used it on the Carmen Ghia chassis and it worked out really well. It's got a reducer, it's got a hardener and the epoxy paint. You don't have to use a reducer, but you can you reduce it and you can use a smaller tip and make it a little bit thinner coat. Um, also, we have the gloss black here that I picked up from Ben's Paint Supply. And it's a three-part single stage. Some lacquer thinner here for cleaning. New cartridges for my mask sticks. And I got the 3M paint system. I picked this up last year too. Used it on the Carmagia chassis and on the body. And it worked great. It comes with these disposable tips. You can get all different sizes. These are 1.4s. So we're gonna use 1.4 for the epoxy. We're gonna reduce it just a little bit and we'll use 1.4 for the uh, gloss black. Let's mix up the epoxy, get it in the gun and start spraying. One to one ratio, guys.
Check it out. It's looking pretty good. It's got the epoxy primer on it. I let it dry overnight and uh, it looks awesome. So it's still just a little bit wet, but it's okay to go ahead and put on the top coat. And we're gonna do that today. I'm excited. All right guys, check it out. All right guys, we'll get a nice close up of it before we add the top coat. You can see that epoxy primer lays on real nice. It looks good. It almost looks like a gloss, but it will keep drying. It'll kind of end up being a little more of a flat once it dries completely. But yeah, that's basically what it's gonna look like. We're gonna put the gloss on it. It's probably gonna be a little shinier. Let's do it. All right, let's get this black paint mixed up. This is a three part single stage. Never used it before, but I'm sure it'll be fine. So six parts to one part to one part. What's cool about this has a filter on it as well, so getting double filtration, not that anything's really gonna get in there, but you never know, especially in a dirty old shop like this. 1.4. All right, get my mask on and hook up the hose and we'll be ready.
All right, the first top coat is on. We're gonna do at least one more, maybe two, just to try to get everything covered. Not totally necessary. Again, this is just a chassis, but trying to take it to the next level. And I'm also practicing my technique and everything, which obviously needs a lot of technique, but it's going on. I don't think I got any runs. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. So I'm gonna make like a double batch this time. We ran out halfway on the pan here, not even. We only got like a, a little bit done over here. So we need three quarters more over here. Then we're gonna do another coat on this side, another coat on that side. All right, guys, there it is. Looks pretty good. You know, it's not perfect. I did have a run or two, and I might have a little bit of orange peel here and there. It's still drying, so I'm not sure if that's gonna smooth out or not, but definitely, there are definitely some orange peel, some, I probably just, I started getting a little wild and couldn't remember where I was and probably put, put too much on at one time. But you know what? I'm not a professional painter. I'm just uh, someone that is trying to learn. So it is what it is. I'm happy with it. It's a chassis. You're not even gonna see any of this for the most part anyway. So yeah, it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. I'm gonna let it dry uh, for a little while. I might even put it out in the sun and let it dry out there. See, there's a run right there. All right, we got it outside, baking in the sun. Not sure if that's a good idea or not, but it seems like it should be. Kind of bake it, get it nice and baked in there. Maybe it'll help blend in some of that orange peel. I'm not sure. Like I said, it doesn't really matter. At one point, like when I put the first coat on, it was perfectly smooth. It looked like glass. When I was putting the second coat on, you know, I just kind of noticed it was starting to get a little orange peely. So, you know, that's expected. 
with someone that has basically no experience. <laughs> so, yeah, overall, it's not bad. I mean, the idea here was to cover it completely, to protect it from rust, and to make it look sweet, too. Although it's going to be covered up, it does, uh, it is pretty cool to see it all cleaned up and shiny. Just like the Carmen Ghia chassis. Um, although on the Carmen Ghia chassis, I didn't use gloss, I used uh, satin. And it turned out really nice, although I did have some orange peel and some imperfections on that as well. You know, if I did this every week, I would be perfect at it, you know. But you do it once every few months, it's, it's gonna take a while. <laughs> To get your skills that way you know this is painting is uh it's definitely a skill and an art and um and a craft and it's something you need to do a lot to get you know comfortable especially when it's 100 degrees out 100 percent humidity doesn't help <laughs> so guys the chassis is done Next, we gotta clean up this beam. We gotta get the transmission cleaned up and ready to go. All the brake components, the drums, all this stuff, the back plates, clean up the starter, the uh, steering box, and replace all the worn out stuff like the shocks and the tie rods, the bushings, the wheel cylinders, the master cylinder, the seals, the bearings, I have all that stuff and we're gonna replace all that stuff and we're gonna do a full build on the chassis this week. And I need to get this thing, look at how bad this is. I need to get this pedal cluster rebuilt and lots of other stuff, guys. <laughs> it's a lot, it is a lot. But you know what, I'm having fun and uh, it is what it is, I enjoy it. I need to find another seat. I'm missing a seat. And also, we're going to have to figure out this right here. How to fix this. I don't... I mean, this is toast. See this little rail right here? This side's perfect. But this side's all roached out. So I don't even know if they sell this little piece here. Or if I just have to find a donor seat. I'm not sure. But we've got a lot to do. I want to, I want to clean those up really good. Maybe sandblast them and get them recovered. Clean up the transmission really good and the front beam, the gas tank. There's a lot to do. And then, once the chassis is complete, we're going to start working on the body. We're going to replace the heater channels and the luggage compartment area and all that stuff. So it's going to be pretty sweet. I've got some seam sealer here. We're not going to put it on right now, but I remember I bought this last year, so hopefully it's still good. Um, I've got seam sealer gray, and I've got some seam sealer compound black. So I think the black we'll use on the bottom. Hopefully that's enough to do the bottom, and then the gray we'll put on the top. Hopefully that's enough to do the top. If not, we'll have to get some more, but we'll try that out. I'm gonna let it dry for a couple days first before we mess with it. We're gonna get the transmission cleaned up and painted, the front beam cleaned up and painted. All right, guys, we got a lot to do this week. It's gonna be a busy week. I'm gonna have some product reviews coming out this week as well. If you could, please watch them, like them, comment, and if you end up buying one of them, please let me know. If you do, it helps the channel a lot. I get a little bit of commission off of each purchase, and that helps me fund some of these projects. Also, if you want to be eligible to win some of these products, become a member. You can click below and become a member. It's only $4.99 a month and you'll be eligible to win some of these products that I review. I get welders, pressure washers. I get all kinds of stuff, guys. Electric bikes. It's a win-win for everyone. So try it out. If for some reason after a few months you don't like it, you can always uh, turn it off at any time. All right, guys, I'm getting ready to go home for the day. But before I do, I want to get this transaxle up on the table so we can start working on it tomorrow. I really want to get a hoist in here. This is a winch. This is more of a, a winch style or a come along. So a hoist would have a, a remote control 
extension cable so you can control it from the ground. On this one, I have to get up on the ladder and do it. You just gotta get up on the ladder to do it, to control it. Where a hoist would have a handheld remote that you could use from the ground. I would highly suggest if you're going to be doing this type of work to get something to help you lift heavy things because it sucks when you hurt your back. <laughs> luckily, uh, I've hurt my back a couple times, but luckily it, it heals. But you want to try to limit, you know, I could probably pick this thing up by myself and lift it up here, but... I might be sore for a week after. All right, this should work pretty good. We got it tied up real nice here. There's a pretty cool dolly at Harbor Freight. I think it's like 600 bucks, maybe 700 bucks. It's kind of like that frame out there. I forget what they call that uh, trolley A-frame thing. Basically, it's a device to hook the hoist to so you can lift stuff. That thing's awesome, but it's too tall to fit in here and it's not on wheels. I wanna get one in here that I can move around pretty easy and it's tall enough to put a hoist on and I can move it around and we can pick up engines and transmissions and stuff with it. So that's something I want, is on the wish list. Hopefully uh, I can pick one up soon. All right, let's see if we can this is the other thing that's a little sketchy is you're on the ladder. So when this thing starts going up, it could swing and hit the ladder and knock you off the ladder. So you gotta be really careful. So this is not ideal, <laughs> but it is working really good. Um, let's see what happens. Go nice and slow and snug it up and take it real slow. See, it's gonna fly over and hit the ladder. And guys, I've spent years on a ladder, so I'm pretty good holding my balance on a ladder. a normal hoist setup works very similar to this except the hoist is fixed in position or on the trolley and you have a, uh, a switch with usually it's a remote switch with a cable that goes up to the hoist and you can turn it on and off up or down and but you can hold it down here and you can stand out of the way and you're not on a ladder. So that's that's what I want to get set up. But for now, temporarily, 
this is working. I mean, the idea is to be able to lift transmissions, engines, beams, bodies, uh, you know, car bodies, and, <laughs> and uh, whatever, anything heavy. Uh, the other issue you got to be worried about is the amount of weight that the structure you have can hold. So I don't want to put too much weight on this structure. This is not a heavy duty structure up here, but it can definitely hold, you know, a couple hundred pounds. Like you can, you can go up there and hang off of that. It's not going to hurt it, but you don't want to put more than, you know, three, four, 500 pounds on that structure up there. So whatever you're lifting, make sure it's rated for it. It works pretty good. I don't know how much that transmission weighs. It probably weighs about 150, maybe 200 pounds, something like that. Not sure. I guess we could weigh it or look it up, but um, it is what it is. We're going to put it on the table and maybe the next episode we'll get this thing all cleaned up and ready for paint. Get the front beam all cleaned up and ready for paint. The brake drums and all that stuff. All right, guys, I appreciate it. All right, let's set her down. Of course, I got to climb back up the ladder to do that. Out. We got a little leak. I forgot I pulled the plugs out to drain some of the oil the other day and there's a little bit left in there because um, what happened was I was pressure washing the whole thing. I don't know if you remember but this thing was completely covered with you know three inches of dirt, grease, clay, all kinds of junk. I mean it was just everywhere. You can see where it's kind of eaten into the case here. It was pretty bad. But I pressure washed it, I covered it with super clean and some other deep purple and all that stuff and cleaned it really good. And there's still a little bit on there, but some water had gotten under the boot and kind of got in there. So I, I cleaned it up real good. I sprayed some WE-40 in there. I drained all the oil, well, some of it. There's still some in there, but uh, there's a little bit coming out. So I think I cleaned it out pretty good. What I want to do is get all the rest of the grease and dirt off of this thing, scrub it really good, wire wheel it, and then we'll take it outside again, hit it with some super clean, rinse it off, and then we'll paint it. Put some uh, epoxy primer on there and some clear or some gloss black. We'll do the same thing for the front beam. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one. I appreciate it. Please consider becoming a member. It's going to be huge. I appreciate it, guys. See ya.